Oh gosh. Stab myself again. Ah, oh, that was a first. Hi guys, welcome. I'm Sandy and for years and years I have struggled with the scraps of fabric I have lying around. Because you know, anything I sew, there's always some leftover fabric and I put it in a bag to use one of these days on a scrappy project, except I never do or I don't do it enough. And the fabric just keeps piling and piling and now I just have bags and bags filled with scraps cluttering my tiny sewing space. Well, this changes today because today we are going to learn how to quilt as we go. And if you struggle with your leftover scraps of fabric too, this video is for you. Let's do it. So what exactly is to quilt as you go? Well, the name says it all really, but just let me give it a try. So when we're making a quilt, we usually make a quilt block, then several quilt blocks that we sew together to make a quilt top, right? You've seen me do it dozens of times. <laughs> then we make the quilt sandwich by putting the quilt top on top, the batting in the middle and the fabric for the back of the quilt together and then we quilt the whole thing and that's it. When you quilt as you go it's a little bit different and a lot more unpredictable actually because you are making your quilt in three layered chunks. Like imagine a six inch square made of top, batting and bottom that you make and quilt one chunk at a time. And then you join all the chunks together and you're done. <laughs> That's what a quilt as you go looks like. Now there are several advantages to making a quilt this way, like the fact that it's quicker because you can string piece each chunk in an industrial size like operation and because this way you won't have to worry about fitting a whole bulky quilt through your sewing machine to quilt it. You're quilting one chunk at a time and that's just so much easier to do. And that actually makes it perfect for all of you who have a not so potent sewing machine and have to work around its limitations to quilt this is your answer. Also, you can use any size of scraps you want for your top, you know, from a micro itty bitty piece of fabric to a larger strip. So let me just get my scraps, have loads of those, like I've told you, all sizes, all colors, all shapes. And I have also already cut a six inch backing fabric and a six inch square of batting. This is my chunk. <laughs> now we are going to be adding enough strips to cover this whole square of, uh, let me see, exactly like we did for the strip quilt block. Do you remember that one? It was right at the beginning, I think, so it's almost a year old. <laughs> Except that instead of just sewing all the strips together and making a top, we're adding each strip to our sandwich, okay? So, uh, we do one like this, maybe leave it a little bit out, and the second, let me see. I'm making big ones, okay? I, this is going to be a really long video, so I don't want to take too much time to show you. I think this will be pretty self-explanatory. Now we need to make sure that the fabric covers the entire square. So you need to open it, see how far do you need to take it. For example, here, before folding it over, maybe giving it a little bit more leeway. Okay, and now we pin, and now we sew. And this is what you get. Now we'll just keep adding more and more strips and sewing them until the entire square is covered, okay? Let's do some yellow. So the yellow needs to be... Okay, so let's sew again. This is our third strip. And if you turn it around, you can see we are quilting as well as making the top. We're doing two things at once. And that's why it's so quick to make a, a quilt block or a quilt in general when you're using this technique. So now we're going to go with pink, something like this. I always drive it a little bit further down to make sure my calculations are correct because I really don't want any piece of this block to go uh, naked, <laughs> basically. We need to cover the whole thing. Okay, almost there. Now all we need is this tiny a little corner down here. Maybe this orange, this nice little orange here. Yeah, I think that will do. Great. And here we go. Our entire block is hidden 
and our entire block is quilted. <laughs> okay, so now we are just going to press this and uh, you know how this goes. We press and then we trim all this excess off and we'll be done. And there we have it guys, a quilt as you go quilt block done in no time. Now you can make these diagonal, you can make these, you know, vertical, horizontal, you know, however you prefer. The method is the exact same just as we have done here. Look at that, isn't that cute? <laughs> Ready to go in no time. Okay, let's give this another try, but this time we're going to use smaller bits and make a log cabin quilt block as we go. Six inch backing fabric, six inch batting. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with one of these pieces we just removed from our first quilt block. Like we make a... Is this tiny enough for you? <laughs> so let's just start right here in the middle with these with this tiny tiny rectangle and now we are going to be adding tiny little strip still using fabrics from the quilt block we just ended let's see what we can get here uh, yeah like we cut something like this okay so we get this rectangle and we pin it in place just like this, and now we sew. Okay, now this one stays here. Now we need a fresh strip for here. Now the reason why I'm not using a quarter of an inch foot is because, you know, the guy tends to be stuck in the batting and ruins the batting, and we do not want that. Okay, so... Let me just... Now we just add a little strip. And now we have three, and now we just keep on going until we fill the whole thing. Let's make it a big one. I'm a very impatient quilter. <laughs> definitely be over doing it and then we'll trim that's the best way to do it don't try and make it fit exactly the square it's unnecessary work really you can just go over and then trim it's much easier that way another strip and we can see in the back all the quilting we're doing at the same time, instead of just doing the top, we're already getting half the job done. Okay, so now we go this way, and that's why I get all the scraps, because <laughs> I just keep cutting and cutting and cutting. I have such noisy neighbors, guys. I'm sorry, you're probably hearing them right now. I apologize. I can't wait to move is all I can tell you because this has been insane. It's the dogs barking, it's the kids crying, it's, I don't know, hammering, all of that. Okay, two more to go guys before we can move on. And just one more here. Ok 
Okay guys, so we do this again. We're going to press. Oh gosh. Stab myself. Ah, oh, that was the first. Okay, so now we press. And now we trim. Can you see the quilting pattern in the back? I think that's the cutest thing. Okay, let's trim this. While the baby continues to cry in the background. I apologize, guys. Hopefully, with the music and the addition, you won't hear a lot of it. Okay, guys, and here we have it, our wonky login cabin quilt block. You know, quilt, quilted as we go, as we went. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Uh, ready to go. Here are the two versions we have made so far, and they are looking really, really cute. Okay, guys, quick question. Can you make a quilt as you go quilt block out of an existing patchwork quilt block? Imagine you already have a patchwork quilt block complete, and I, as you very well know, have many, many, many that I've done with you over these last 10 months. So let me just get one so I can show you, okay? Here we go. Do you remember this one, guys? We made, uh, turn it upside down. We made, you know, these flying geese quilt blocks on the half square triangle variant, I think. I love this one. It's actually turned around. It's not the, the, flat, the triangles that have the color, it's the background, which I absolutely love. To make a quilt as you go quilt block out of this one, uh, we just need to add some backing fabric. This is the one I picked. And some batting, right? So we're essentially making our very own quilt sandwich. Except this one is just so much smaller than the ones I used to make, right? Here we go. Quilt sandwich. Done. Now what we do? We pin to make sure it does not move because the next step is to quilt them, right? Except instead of quilting the whole top, you know, the whole sandwich, we are just quilting this little chunk. You can pin it as much or as little as you want. This, yeah, this isn't going to work. You want to keep the back fabric nice and straight. You can use your adhesive spray if you want, just like you would a regular quilt, because now we are going to sew. And I think I'm going to follow the geese, follow the triangles, and let's see what we get. And here we go guys, I did this real quick. I wasn't very thorough about it. As you can see, look at the backing, all this quilting. And here we go, our little chunk, our quilt as you go quilt block is done. It really is this simple. Now that we've got this whole quilt as you go quilt block covered, how do we join the quilt blocks? Is it even possible or are we just making a lot of mug rugs here? <laughs> Let me show you. You know, there are actually several ways to do it, but I have picked my favorite two for you. Okay, so let me just get two quilt blocks from before. Two of my favorites, some pinwheels and some diamonds. And we will need two squares of backing fabric that's actually two inches wider than this quilt block. So this is eight inches and we need two 10 inches, okay? And of course, we need two squares of backing. That's the size of the quilt top, not the backing, okay? Here we go, making our sandwiches. Let's see if we can get this to be in the middle. So if it's two inches, we will have one inch on each side, which I think is pretty much that. Uh, so wrong side up, okay? This is the right side and it's pointing down, it's facing down. So first we quilt them in place and then we join them. I don't really need a lot of quilting. I don't think I'll be doing it a lot because all we need is for the fabric to not move. 
and that's pretty straightforward. I think I'm going to just sew along these lines, maybe those two, just make a cross and be done. So yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay guys, we are back and I haven't done anything too peculiar with it. I just drew a cross on either of them, but you can quilt them as you like. You can free motion quilt it, you know, just as you would do your regular quilt. Now, we are going to take these two quilt blocks and we are going to face the back fabrics together like so. Now, we are going to pin them in place, making sure that the block tops are pretty much at the same. Yeah, I think yeah, this went down a little bit. Uh, I'm trying to feel my way around it because that's all you can do really. Okay, and now I'm going to pin them in place, making sure the two blocks are you know, parallel, one on top of the other. And now I'm going to sew a line as close to the quilt block top as I possibly can. Okay, so now that I have done that, I can open these up and I'm just going to press these seams nice and open like so. We just turned it around top side up and we pressed the two pieces of fabric open uh, over the quilt block top, right? Next, we're just going to fold both sides into each other like this and we are going to pin. And now we are going to sew along both of these wedges, okay? Just add one um, sewing line here and another swing down here and we'll be to go. Okay guys, and this is what we get. Our quilt blocks are joined. Let me show you how this looks in the back. Just two lines, nothing to it. And these quilts and these quilt blocks are nice and joined together just as intended. Okay, after this, we can add as many quilt blocks as we'd like. And once we're finished, we can self-bind our quilt in the exact same way. So we just fold this over the top, just like we did with the side strip. And we just pin it in place. Just like that. And now over here, we do the same. We have to watch out for our little corners. We need really crisp corners. Sharp corners that actually work. Just now for these corners, we just need to be that see a nice little corner we've got going on here and we pin it in place again oh gosh I keep poking myself with the pins I don't know what's going on today okay and we keep going same thing here another tight little corner you can trim off the excess if you want I am not going to right now I probably would if this were a quilt. Darn it, I have pricked myself with the pen. I don't know what's going on today. Now you could have sewn um, both these strips together, but I prefer to do it this way, but you know, you can do it either way. It really doesn't make a difference. I have tried it both ways and I think they both work. It's probably easier if you just sew these two pieces together and it becomes just one continuous piece of fabric. And now we are just going to sew the whole thing, okay?
And there we have it guys, do you see? Real simple quilting at the back and the quilt blocks are all sewn together. Now, can you imagine a whole quilt done like this? <laughs> How easy it is to make. Oh, I love it. I really, really do. <laughs> quilt as you go is growing on me, guys. It really, really is. Okay, this next way to join quilt as you go quilt blocks is probably the most well-known one, okay? Let's just get the first two quilt blocks we made earlier, shall we? So our diagonal strips and our log cabin quilt block. So it's already quilted, the sandwich is done, and there's really not much we can do to it. Okay, so to join these two quilt blocks together, we will need one 1 1.18 inch strip of fabric, the length of the quilt block, just like this, and one one and three quarter inch strip of fabric, the length of the quilt block as well. Okay, so first thing we do is we fold this larger strip in half, just like this, and then we press it. So here we go, nice and pressed in half. So now we take the thinner strip, we move our block to have the back pointing towards us, and we are just going to attach this thinner strip to the back of our quilt block, like so. We pin, of course. Pin uh, away from the, the edge, okay? We don't want it too close. And then we will add the folded strip to the side of the top of our quilt block, raw edges aligned just like so. So see these raw edges, these raw edges, and we are just going to align this. So now that these strips are all pinned in place, we are just going to sew right here using our quarter of an inch foot, okay? The quarter of an inch foot is important. Both these strips were cut the length they were because we are using the quarter of an inch foot. Okay, so this is nice and sewn. So what we're going to do now, we're going to turn this back around. This strip comes off, just like this. We fold it over, we fold it out, and now we're going to attach our second block. So we're going to put this back sides together, just like this. So make sure it's nice and aligned. Just decide, now we're just going to sew one strip. So we're going to pin it, and we are going to sew it, just like we did, okay? Okay, so you can see right now that the bags are already sewn together. So now we're going to turn it over to the top, and we are going to fold the remaining strip over to this side to join the two blocks together, just like so. Now, if you don't want the stitches to be noticed on the top, you can just sew this by hand and be done with it. Just keep in mind that if you choose to machine sew it, you will need to add a seam here, but also a seam on this side to make it nice and even, okay? And that's how we do it, you know, you just keep adding strips of fabric to the back and the front and keep going and going and adding more and more quilt blocks until we reach the size of the quilts we want. Quite simple, don't you think? Guys, I have to ask, would you like to watch me make a whole quilt this way? You know, to quilt as I go an entire quilt? Maybe even do one along with me? Shall we give it a try? Let me know in a comment below what you think. You know, if you're up for watching it, I'm up for making it. <laughs> Guys, guess what? We are done with this awesome, awesome video. I hope you'll give this one a try. It is very relaxing, very easy process that I think you'll love. Thank you for doing this with me. I had a blast and I hope you did too. I will see you very, very soon. Bye-bye.